So let's go to Logic and see how to set it up. Hello everyone, my name is Ivan and today's video is a follow-up on the previous topic on how to set up the shuttle control uh, to use with any type of DAW or a hardware sequencer. And we got a lot of questions on how to set it up using Logic or like Octatrack or Beatstep Pro and this is exactly what we're going to do today. So to refresh our memory, let's uh, set up another preset on the shuttle control in the cargo editor. So here, just for the purpose of this tutorial, let's set up two channels of pitch and gate information. So CV1 is going to be set to channel 1, CV2 also channel 1, and for the first output this is going to be pitch 1 volt per octave, second output is going to be trigger unipolar, third output is going to be on channel 2, and fourth on channel 2 as well, and same as above, this is going to be a uh, pitch 1 volt per octave and uh, trigger unipolar. So the preset is done. Uh, let's uh, write the current preset. We see the button P light up. And as you see, all the other outputs are noise. And these four are going to be pitch gate, pitch gate for channel 1 and for channel 2. So let's go to logic and see how to set it up. In Logic, when you first open it up, just check in the preferences, uh, go to MIDI, uh, to inputs, and make sure that shuttle control is detected and this button is turned on. Then uh, we create external MIDI track, just like that, super simple, even kind of easier than Ableton, to be honest. Um, in here, we go to select channel 1, all right, that's good for us. Let's duplicate this track and set this one to channel 2. So now we have this keyboard, which I can play with just a computer keyboard, and we should see the lights light up here. So, as you can see, this is channel 1, trigger and pitch. If we go higher, this is gonna go green. If we go lower, it's gonna go red, meaning it's a bipolar signal to below 0 volts. Alright, so now we go to channel 2, same way, now channel 2 is responding. So as you can see, the setup with any DAW is going to be pretty much the same. You should think of shuttle control as your hardware MIDI synthesizer, for example. So if you're using other DAWs like Cubase and uh, Reaper and so on, just check out how to set up external instruments or external MIDI devices or how to send MIDI information to hardware synth. And I'm sure you're going to find all all the answers to all of your questions really. Nothing, uh, it's not rocket science, it's just synthesizers. So let's get to hardware sequencers. The first one on the menu today is going to be pretty famous Beatstep Pro and I'm just gonna show you how to set this up with the shuttle control and we actually already have a preset which is a factory preset available on the website and it's also already flashed on the shuttle control if you just purchase that. So really you don't need to set up anything I'm just going to show you how the same setup we did with Ableton, with Logic, with anything else, it works the exactly same way with the hardware sequencers. So first of all, let's power this up. The first host input. All right, so everything is working fine. Let's go to the cargo editor. And as you can see here, new factory preset, the preset number one is dedicated to Arturia. Bitstep Pro and everything is already set up. So let me show you. Let's go to preset one. You see channel one is the first sequencer, channel two is the second sequencer, and then we have channel 10, which is the third sequencer, which is called the drum sequencer. And in this one, uh, we have different MIDI notes. And once shuttle control detects these MIDI notes, it's going to output a trigger. So technically, it's just a pad to trigger converter. So let's flash the preset to the shuttle control uh, for the Beatstep Pro. We go down, write current preset, P lights up, it's ready to go. So now select sequencer one. This is a melodic sequencer. And you can see that we have two triggers or three triggers and some CV information going. So this is track one. Sequencer two, this is set up on channel two. Same thing. Just one trigger and one pitch. And for the drum sequencer, every key 
is going to be a different trigger. As you can see, different outputs light up. So this is a super nice way to set it up to use with Queen of Pentacles or any other drum modules you might have where you don't really need a pitch signal, all you want is just a trigger out, right? So, okay, done with this one. Let's disconnect this. All right, so the second meal of the day is going to be Electron Octatrack. Let's get it here. I know many people use this with their modular and there is a good reason why, because you have eight uh, channel sequencer. You can also sample stuff, but that's not the topic of today. So now let's go to the Carver 4 editor. Inside of here, preset 4 is set up for Electron Octatrack and uh, it's set up to be sending media on channels 9 to 15. The reason for that is that the first eight channels are actually internal channels, so you can disable them, but usually if you just got this, you don't really want to trigger internal things. So all of the MIDI is set to channels 9 to 15. The cable I'm going to be using today is M-Audio MIDI to USB cable. And these things are not a great quality, so sometimes when you buy one, it might not work. So if you're thinking of getting one, I would really recommend getting two. And if in case you're having problems, it's usually not the shuttle control. So let's connect this. It goes into the host input of the shuttle control. And then let's check MIDI out and connect this to MIDI output. Then let's go to uh, Cargo 4 editor and uh, flash the preset 4, but it's actually already available as a factory preset. But just to show you how to do things, let's do this. So. Preset 4, write current preset, everything is written. So now on Electron Octa track, all you have to do is press MIDI, go to the first track, double press here, select channel 9. Don't forget to press the encoder to actually activate it. Here, same thing, channel 10, channel 11. Channel 12. I'm not going to set up everything, but just to show that it works. Here we are. Let's go to chromatic. And we should see the LEDs light up on the shadow control when I play the track one. As you see, the first one is trigger, second one, or CV out nine, is the pitch for this track. Let's go to this track. Everything lights up. This track, everything lights up. The Octatrack and Shadow Control is really a perfect pair, in my opinion, because you have eight tracks and you want to send pitch and gate information, which means you need 16 outputs, and that's exactly what the Shadow Control does. Yeah, as you can see, nothing complicated. Everything works the same way with DOS, with hardware, with keyboards, with any kind of sequencing. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that uh, shadow control doesn't seem so mysterious now. It's just a MIDI to CV converter and think of it as uh, any hardware uh, synthesizer that has MIDI, right? So that way, if you have any questions for other DOS, uh, you can Google that stuff online on how to set up MIDI to external instruments. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, if you have any ideas or something you would want us to go over in the next videos, we are always listening, we are happy to help you. And uh, yeah, until next time, hope you enjoyed the video. Click the like button, subscribe, and until next time.